Hello, and welcome to another episode of Grace Faith Christian Discipleship, where God changes lives through the hearing of His Word. I'm Gary Preston. This episode was recently recorded at a live Grace Faith Christian Discipleship Bible study. I want to speak about communion today. The first feast given to the children of Israel under the law of Moses is called the Feast of Passover and Unleavened Bread. And we're going to read about it in Exodus chapter 12. So Robin and everybody, if you could turn to Exodus chapter 12 in your Bible. I'm going to ask Robin in a few minutes to read from verse 1 down to verse 14, Robin, but just want to give other people time to get over to Exodus chapter 12 in their Bible. So the Passover is basically the picture of our redemption. In other words, it's a, a type and shadow of our redemption. If I can just hand over to Robin now to read Exodus Chapter 12, verses 1 to 14, please, Robin. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on two side posts, and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are, And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Thank you, Robin. In the Passover, God commanded Israel to remember. To remember what? That lamb that was slain. The Passover lamb that was slain. The Passover lamb that he instructed them to consume while they were standing, ready for that journey out of Egypt. Robin's just read that they had to be ready. They actually had to eat it quickly. They had to have their their sandals on, their staff in their hand while they're eating, ready to go. Because this was, get ready, you're going to leave Egypt Egypt tonight. When God says, you shall, as he does in Exodus 
uh, chapter 12, verse 14, which was the last verse that Robin just read, it's a commandment. The Passover is a, a picture, as I said before, or shadow of what was to happen to redeem you and me. And of course, the scripture teaches us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin or of sin. Now, Robin, can I also ask you to read Hebrews chapter 9, please? Uh, Not the whole of it, just from verse 13 to 22. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13 to 22, please, Robin. Yes, just one moment, Gary. The Passover is a picture or a shadow of what happened to redeem you and me. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify us to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead, Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Amen. Thank you, Robin. Verse 18 says, Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. Verse 20 saying, This is the blood of of the covenant which God has commanded you. I want to take that verse 20. This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you and compare it with 1 Corinthians 11.25 which says, In the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, He being Jesus, Jesus also took the cup after supper, and this is where the similarity comes in, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. See, even the wording between verse 20 and 1 Corinthians, uh, sorry, Hebrews 9 verse 20 and 1 Corinthians 11:25. even the wording is so similar it's just basically got that word new, new covenant in my blood you can see that the old is a type and shadow of the new even by the way it's worded in the Bible so the Passover lamb is a, as I said before is a picture of our redemption And also that journey that the children of Israel started with the Lord, that journey out of Egypt that the children of Israel started with the Lord, it's representative 
or is a type and shadow of our Christian walk today. The Passover has now been changed into what we call communion, the Lord's Supper. It's got a lot of different names. The Eucharist is another. Communion is to remind us of the sacrifice that Jesus made, his shed blood and his broken body. We find Paul reiterating in the New Testament what God had told the children of Israel in Exodus and over in Leviticus. In the New Testament, Paul says, As oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you just show the Lord's death till he comes. Paul says the Lord commanded us to do this in remembrance of him. When Jesus says, This do in remembrance of me, it's more than a suggestion. It's a commandment. As you can see, the Passover that Israel celebrated over and over was to remember how God delivered them out of Egypt and also to point them to a day that the true sacrifice was going to be made, that sacrifice of the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. And now you and I, we're not looking back at Egypt. We are looking back. We're looking back at the cross of Calvary. Communion is to put us in remembrance of the shed blood and the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just love how you brought that out in communion, Robin. Passover was a type and shadow to picture the event. But we don't observe the shadow as Israel did. We observe the true sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, who took away the sin of the world. Jesus, before he went to the cross, he called his disciples together and said, we're going to celebrate the Passover one more time this way. But after this time, you're not going to remember Egypt. You're going to remember Calvary. And so, we're still to observe this event as the Lord says, this do in remembrance of me. And every time we celebrate it, we're remembering the Lord's death till he comes. So Passover is the feast that we celebrate and call communion or the Lord's Supper. It's to remind us of the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. So we see the Passover as a type and shadow has actually been fulfilled at Calvary's cross. Praise to Jesus. Before I go to each of you for comments, I'd also like to look at what's meant by taking communion in an unworthy manner. What is meant by this? I'm just going to read straight from the Word of God and I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and I'm going to do the reading this time, Robin, from verse 23 to verse 30. The reason that I don't need notes is that the Word of God actually explains this. It's so easy to understand. Uh, it's amazing that people have got it so mixed up. Basically it comes down to the fact that to be confused over this, you need help. You don't need help to understand it. You need help to misunderstand it. And I can tell you in the body of Christ there's a lot of help out there because it's being taught wrong from the pulpit. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 reading from verse 23 to verse 30. I'm going to read it very, very slowly because I want everybody to get a really good handle on this. And then I'll read right through without any explanation and then I'll jump back up and give the explanation or allow the word to explain itself, allow the word to uh, declare itself, you might say. Verse 23 from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord 
that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 29. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Verse 30. For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Well, the key to this the misunderstanding in the body of Christ is in, well, it's, it starts in verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, in an unworthy manner. Well, it's this understanding of what an unworthy manner is. The key word there being manner. Let's go to 1 Peter 2.24. You can probably already quote this. Uh, You don't need to turn in your Bible to it. I'm just going to read one verse there. 1 Peter 2.24 Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. This verse is part of foundational Christian doctrine. It's across the board. Because what this is talking about is the body of Christ that was broken for us. And yet, in the church, in the body of Christ, there is a whole section. It is a large percentage of the body of Christ. You just pick a figure in your mind as to how great a number of born-again Christians do not believe 1 Peter 2.24. Do not believe by his stripes you were healed. Why do they not believe? Because they've been taught a variety of things. They've been taught unbelief. Unbelief is anything that comes into contradiction with the word of God. They have been taught that healings passed away with the last of the disciples. That is completely wrong. But is this wrong understanding? You see, if we go back up to verse 27 of verse 27 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord, when you're eating this bread, you are actually celebrating First Peter 2.24, by whose stripes you were healed. So, basically, what you've got is a group of people who don't believe in healing, and yet they're coming and taking communion about something, can I say half of which, well, let's not divide it into 50 and 50. Let's say they don't believe in what Jesus paid for by the lashes, by the stripes of, on his body. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. And yet they're taking communion. 
Well, God is saying that you can't take 50% of communion. You've got to take the whole of communion. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, you're starting, I'm sure you're starting to see what the unworthy manner is, will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Why? Because communion is about, it's not only about the body, it's about the body and the blood. And if you only believe half of the story, if you only believe in the blood, and you don't believe in the body, then God is saying that you're guilty of both. Verse 28, But let a man examine himself. What's it mean by examine himself? Well, it's not talking about, have I committed sin? Jesus, the blood of Jesus, one drop of the blood of Jesus was worth more than the sins of all mankind, past present and future one drop of his blood but Jesus shed way more than one drop of his blood he paid for the sin of all mankind sin is not the issue sin is not what this unworthy manner is examine yourself means have a look at what you're believing do you believe that by his stripes you were healed well if you don't believe it don't come to communion that's what this word is saying. If you don't believe it, go and sort, get your belief system sorted out. It's basically trashing what Jesus did when he, he took those stripes, when he was scourged by those Roman guards, when they lashed him with that cat of nine tails and tore the stripes on his body, tore the skin, the flesh from his entire body, so much so that it said that he was hardly recognisable. To not believe this and yet come and take communion. Verse 28, But let a man examine himself, and, le and so, after you've examined yourself and you're in agreement that by his stripes you were healed, and your agreement that by the blood of Christ you are justified and through faith you receive salvation. And then let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 29, For whoever eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself. This is not judgment that God's putting on them. This is eats and drinks judgment to himself. What's judgment? Judgment is under the law. Judgment is under the law. Not discerning the Lord's body. It doesn't say that they don't, and don't get me wrong here, this is not, these people have not lost their salvation, but they're not discerning the Lord's body. It's a major... These verses are making it a major. I won't elaborate on it. Verse 30, For this reason many are weak and sick among you. Why are they weak and sick among you? Is this God putting it on them? No. They're weak and sick among us because they don't believe that by his stripes you were healed. And it goes on to say, and many sleep. Well, that means, and many die. Why are they dying? Because they get sick, they don't believe in healing, and they're leaving this planet Earth to be with the Lord ahead of schedule, you might say. God has said to us, with long life I will satisfy thee and show thee my salvation. So there's an order of things. We get to choose when we leave planet Earth. But many of these people are sleeping or dying prematurely, you might say. Why? Because they don't believe 1 Peter 2.24. What has been taught so wrongly in the church, in the body of Christ, is about examining yourself 
And basically they're looking back at, have I sinned? Do I need to confess my sins before I go and take communion? Look, I confess my sins too because it's the right thing to do. But this is, this is not what it's talking about here. Our sins, Jesus dealt with the sin. The blood of Jesus sanctified us. We have eternal redemption, eternal sanctification. Our spirit is perfect and cannot be contaminated by the outside. And by the outside, I'm talking about our soulish realm. A sin, our sins, we sin, it's in the soulish realm. It doesn't contaminate our, our born-again spirit. And that's what God is looking at. God is looking at our spirit. And when we come to him, we need to come to him and see ourselves as he sees us, spotless, pure, by the blood of the Lamb that took away the sin of the world. Amen? Whenever anyone starts talking about sin, guaranteed, absolutely guaranteed, they've been under law-based teaching. L-A-W, Law of Moses, Law-Based Teaching. Anybody who's going, we've got to deal with sin, anybody who's put up questions about sin hasn't got a revelation of the fact that they have eternal redemption, hasn't got a revelation of the power of the blood, of Jesus Christ. However, that, how that, that blood blotted out the sins of mankind. In, in fact, blotted out isn't a good enough terminology. It removed the sin of mankind. People, and I'm talking about Christians, they tend to think that Jesus only, di only died for the sins of those who would receive him. No, the Bible says not for our sin only, but Jesus died for the sin of the entire world. Curry Blake teaches on this. He said the absolutes of God. It's like the when God says he died for the sins of the entire world, uh, it is so absolute that not one sin has any power anymore. Even the sins that we haven't committed yet, because they have been destroyed, they've been rendered powerless by the blood of Jesus. Now, if you guys, if, if those people hearing my voice today can meditate on the, on the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, that blood was so powerful that God doesn't even remember our sins anymore. Doesn't remember not only the sins of the past, he doesn't remember the sins of the present, and he doesn't remember the sins of the future. Sin is not the issue. It's a non-event. When we're taking communion, it's about what we believe. It's about... Do you believe in the blood of Jesus that by the blood that was shed we are justified and we can receive eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? But in addition, do you believe that by the stripes that Jesus received before he went to the cross, a separate event, before he went to the cross, do you believe that his broken body that paid for your healing, do you believe this? That's what it's talking about. It's talking about the body and the blood. Both are contained in what we call communion. We remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. It is not only the blood, it is the blood and the body of Christ that we are remembering. 
And to take communion in an unworthy manner is to only believe half half of what Jesus paid for. And that's what makes it unworthy. It's got nothing to do with sin. Absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing to do with sin. And I'm saying this not for the benefit of the guys and, and, and for Robin, for Graham, for Toby and Robin who are here at Bible study today. I'm saying this for the benefit of those who are listening to this recorded Bible study who have been in a legalistic church because if you're having trouble understanding what you're hearing at this Bible study, it's because of some type of exposure to legalism or the law of Moses generally through a church that you may have been attending and may not be your current church. I can tell you, if you're having trouble understanding this, then you need to go to God and listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will either give you a red light or a green light on what you're hearing here today and let the Holy Spirit, let the peace of God, let it rule in your heart over this matter. Praise you God. I'd like to say a special thank you to my audience. Wherever you may be in the world, God loves you and we love you. If you've got any questions or if you'd just like to encourage us, you can email us at gfcd dot sozo s-o-z-o at gmail dot com we've run out of time right now so remember to subscribe to our podcast so you get a reminder of the soon to be released next episode of grace faith christian discipleship where god changes lives through the hearing of his word amen